Well, I've got to start off too, Paul. I've got to tell you, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of yours. Uh, Mad About You is like one of my favorite series of all time. So I know that's not what we're here to talk about, but I just had to tell you that. Don't stop. Finish your thought. Chris has nothing to do. Well, yeah, bad about you. reboot. Can we talk about anyways? That's a whole new. All right, we'll move on. We'll move on. We're here to talk about this movie. Thank you, Tash. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I loved this movie. I thought it was so much fun. I mean, right from the name, the problem with people, I'm like, yes, there's problems with people. There's many of these. This is gonna be yes. great. <laughs> but I'd love to know, Paul, what was like the inspiration behind writing this? It's so self-serving. I wanted to go to Ireland. <laughs> Nobody was sending me. So I said, well, I guess I should write it. And then, you know, because that's so easy <laughs> to make a movie. Um, but, uh, you know, it started, it literally started uh, seeing Local Hero in 1982 or three, whenever that came out. And I love that movie. And it it's, remains one of my favorite movies. I love small movies. And that was such a beautiful location, such a beautifully made movie that I had it in the back of my head. I want to make a movie like that. I want to go to scotland or ireland somewhere beautiful or ireland i don't know why i changed from scotland and it was just loose in the back of my head and then you know in the last couple of years i said i should probably sit down and write it because it's not going to happen otherwise and um given that i had not really done it on my own i i put out a feel i said i should probably write with somebody and somebody uh suggested this my writing part wally wally marzano lesovich who i never met we just met and i thought what do you think of this idea and we started playing and then but literally all I had was New York guy goes to Ireland. I don't know why. And <laughs> funny stuff, funny stuff ensued. And that was all it was. And sometimes that's enough. Um, but we kind of dug and said, what if they're related? What if it's a, a friction between two sides of the fan? Well, what if it's about the world's conflicts? And this is a small scale example of why, what the problem is with people. And then we kind of stumbled into this structure that really resonated with us. Yeah, Chris. And then I met Chris, who responded to the script, and I said, maybe you're the guy to do this. And then we have been uh, do, working. You know, we started this before COVID, and then so we had plenty of time to chat about it. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, started talking like about it, but we didn't make it till recently. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, what was it like for you coming in on this project? And what was it about this that really made you want to work on it? It's, it's it's quite simple. It's, if I get a script and I really laugh, I'm like, oh, well, this is going to be good. If it's a comedy and I'm laughing, because uh, not often things sort of leap off the page. You have to sort of put a bit of work into how you can visualize it or how you can make it better or what you can bring to it. Whereas this, I just found very funny. And so I read it twice. And the first time I read it, I thought, this is super funny. And the second time I read it, I'm like, oh, actually, this has got tons of heart as well. And I think my, hopefully one of my styles in my work is that, you know, I make stuff that's funny, but also that does have heart. And so when I got the chance to meet Paul and, and sort of tell him that I loved it and tell him that, you know, if I was given the opportunity, I'd do it like this. Um, you know, it was a real, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a dream come true, actually. So I remember the first time I met him, I went up to his house and we had we had coffee, you know, looking out of the uh, over LA and chatting the movie and thinking, God, this could be great if we could just get on a plane and go to Ireland and make this. And then we had to persevere because it's, it's never that easy making a movie. Um, but, but we did persevere and we eventually got around to doing it. So, you know, it was a bit, it was a bit of a fairy tale without sounding too cheesy. You know, and as a writer, when you meet somebody who did not only responds to the script, but what is it about that they get? And with Chris, he got all the obvious, you know, things and he got what the story was, but he would circle in, you know, he would say, sometimes just comment on something that was in the sidebar of the script in the, in the script direct, say stage direction. Or when we talked about the scene, the, the famous curtain scene, and Chris had an idea about the sound effects. And I went, I love that you're already thinking of the sound effects because that's, and that was the most laborious uh, editing thing that we would spend hours on. It. <laughs> what, you know, what's the funniest sound effect and how many and when and where? Yeah, it's um, made up about fun. 15 different elements. That said. The sound <laughs> of that curtain's about 15 different elements. I think it's a cat screaming in there somewhere. <laughs> I love that scene. That scene had me cracking up. I was like, it sometimes like a joke, if it keeps going, it's not funny anymore. You know what I mean? But that scene, like I was just dying the whole way through. Like, nope, now I lost the window. I was like, oh my God, it's so funny. Well, you know, you know what's funny? It, 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 this is, and this as a comic and as a writer, I, I think of this all the time. Sometimes a joke goes on too long. It's like, well, now it's not funny. But if you go just a little bit longer, yeah. now it's funny again. It's like, 
But that is a very slippery patch of terrain there. You're like, do I double down? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> that scene is so great. Can we talk yeah. about the rest of the cast here too? Like, first of all, I love Jane. I love Suburgatory. So I love yeah. having her be a part of this. Um, but can you talk about bringing them on? Because I feel like everyone works extremely well together. Uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about Jane and Chris, you can tell everyone else. Jane, I, had, I did a show I, that I wrote and produced um, four years, five years, five years ago called There's Johnny. Great show. Uh, which is great show. Thank you. It's on... Where is it on Peacock? But it, it's about um, the Johnny Carson show behind the scenes, 1972. And she is the star of it. And the crazy thing is, I had never met her until then, but I grew up with her dad. Her dad and I were, we had a very, very popular uh, rock band in my neighborhood when we were 12. Um, well, not, it was popular within a very small apartment building. But um, anyway, so year, and I had lost touch with him. And, but, Jane Levy was on the scene and somebody says, you know, that's what's his name's daughter. I went, no. So I had heard about her and she was great. Um, and then we met and she just kills me. She's so smart and emotional and she just breaks my heart. So uh, the, so the idea that she's playing my daughter and I go, well, would you believe her as my daughter? Yeah. Cause her dad is my friend <laughs> and she's his daughter. That would work. Um, and then we just did all these Zoom. So I we I wanted her from the beginning, and uh, and then Chris went about finding everybody in Ireland. Jane is the only American besides me. Yeah, I mean, Chris, there's, there's a, all these people. Ah, well, I mean, I just looked under Irish legend and then uh, asked them all to come in the film. And um, no, I was going to say, in addition to obviously the com is is, is now Buggy, uh, Des Keo and Sheila Blitton, who, who play the sort of triumvirate of uh, of oldies. Uh, are all in their own way uh, kind of slight Irish legends and I, they may not be that well known in America although Sheila was in uh, Banshees of Venice and, and did a very good job in it it's that uh, you know they, they're three kind of legends of Ireland and to get those in the film and you can tell from their performances you know they're, they're sharp cookies even though the average age between them, I think is without exaggerating about 88 um, so it's great to get those those guys on board and then just the rest of the locals as well, just very strong, solid actors. Um, you know, Sean Burke, who plays one of the, the young sort of uh, frick and frack guys, is, is you know, a very up and coming, very successful comedian now in, in Ireland and in England. So it's a strong, solid cast that we we're very lucky to get. But again, not that lucky because they all responded to the script and it started the script. Um, and if they like the script, people are going to jump on board. And so it wasn't really that tricky to get them. And, and I, I didn't mean to to fluff over the Colomini because, uh, you know, he's the heart of the movie. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and you know, Colomini is like in Ireland is like De Niro here. And you walk around Dublin with Colomini and, and you don't get far. It's like, ah, how you doing? How you doing? Um, and he stops for everybody. And, and uh, he's such a solid actor and smart and um but what's funny about him and this is really his character too he there's a sweetness inside him that he does a, a lot of work to conceal but it's there and he's a really sweet guy <laughs> but he comes off as gruff and you don't want to mess with him um and so that's what's so fun in this really you know i, I mean he you're doing an irish movie yeah call me because we don't want to get <laughs> and our our styles and our rhythms are are uh, not at all alike, but comparable and compatible and complementary. And so, in the beginning of the movie, where the premise is, we're both we both have senses of humor, but we just keep missing each other, and we're like, ah, they, they should get along, but not. I keep misstepping, and they'll find it. And um, I love watching his pauses in those scenes. I'll, I'll be talking, and he just looks at me like. I'm not sure what you're saying. I'm like, oh, geez. And then I start trying to, you know, apologize. So it, it was it was a great joy playing with him. The, the rhythm and the music of his performance is so fun to watch. You guys are so great together on screen, really. You have such great chemistry and it really shines through. Um, and I think this is a movie, too, where people are going to, like, want to call up maybe people they're holding grudges against a little bit, you know, and kind of make up. I really do. Like, I was like, oh, like, I just want them to be... Friends, like, you know what? That should, if that becomes the thing, 
we will be very happy campers. <laughs> like, you know, the <laughs> movie's like, oh, that. I got to call my father after I saw Flight of the Dreams. It's like, well, if everybody calls whoever they want to make amends with after this movie, then I think we will have done something, Chris. <laughs> I'm, 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 re I'm, re I'm really Tessa. I was thinking, weirdly, I was just thinking that the other day. When I hear of, like, family feuds, you kind of do get to the bottom and think, what? and it's a line in the film, what is it that you want? You know, and Colm says that to to, uh, to Paul's character. And, and I was, it was, I think it was yesterday, so that there must be a way easier way to solve problems. And, and I think it is just talking or communicating or sort of letting ego go or whatever it might be. But it's, it's lovely that you say that because I'd love to think that was true. <laughs> well, I, I think it will be. And congratulations on the film, guys. I loved it. And uh, I'm going to Ireland in three weeks. So now you had me even more excited watching this. Wow. So. I know. Oh, you're going to love it. I can't you're wait. Love it. <laughs> it is. Yes, it is lovely. By the way, it's a little colder than you see in the movie. So bring a sweater. I, that's what I hear. I'm here in L.A. Yeah. and I'm like, oh, no, I'm yeah. going to be freezing. Ooh. I don't know if I'll survive. Oh. <laughs> Thank well, you. I'm so happy to hear your response. That's so lovely. Thank you, Tessa. Yes, of yeah, course. I loved you. it. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Appreciate it.